All right, people, good evening. We're just a couple of hours away now, and I had to make one video about this. This is kind of a big deal. This is a big year. This is a big moment. This is a big opportunity for this franchise. Got to talk about it a little bit here. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit of Seattle Mariners baseball here. And um, I know we're just like a couple hours away from first pitch of opening day. And I know some people are going to be like, why didn't you make this video earlier this week or even this morning? I mean, unfortunately, baseball coincides with draft season. And on my channel, I'm trying to keep the priority to uh, football stuff when there's so much football stuff to talk about. But better late than never. We're a couple hours away from opening day. So let's let's talk a little bit about this team. Let's talk about my expectations. Um... I have the uh, roster up on screen here just to, you know, for people to easily refer to. So, generally speaking, ju just kind of speaking generally about this team, there are some things that I'm encouraged about, and there are some things that I'm concerned about, and everything is relative, right? We all understand that last year this team made the playoffs, won a playoff series, got to the, I guess, ALDS, and lost. Uh, they were very competitive in the ALDS, though, and they were very competitive with the team that ended up winning the World Series. So the expectations are pretty high, and it's hard to meet those expectations. You have to be a really good team, because the expectations now need to be, you need to be one of the best teams in the league. If you really did improve from last year, that's what you're going to be. That's going to be hard, especially because we were very good in close games last year. Uh, two years in a row, we've been good in close games, and... There is some skill involved with being good in close games. There is also some luck, and you can't count on that luck to always replicate itself. So this team, the big thing about it that I really like, I well, okay, there's the obvious thing, right? So just let, let's start with some of the positives. First, I'll just say the rotation, but everybody knows about this rotation. We've got Castillo, Gilbert, and Kirby. I think all three of those guys have a really good chance of being ace quality starters. Robbie Ray, I know people have very mixed feelings about him, but last year he was adjusting and he still actually had a overall average year as a starter. And so far in spring, he's looked dominant. So I, I, I like Ray. I like Ray. I give him a chance to bounce back in a big way in 2023 and live up to that contract. Uh, Marco's a problem, obviously. Any f number five starter we have this year is probably going to be a problem if it's Marco, if it's Flexen. But you can live with that one weak spot in your rotation, I think. So I'm willing to live with that for now. Maybe we call somebody up like Hancock at some point, but honestly, I kind of doubt it. I think we're rolling with Marco this year. So there are some concerns there. I mean, Marco's going to get killed by the lack of shift, but... It's a great rotation that I believe in. I, I'll say that. You you have some guys. I mean, look, I don't know. Flexen might get traded soon. A lot of people are saying Flexen will get traded to a team like the Yankees for INF. But if you don't trade Flexen, you've got him as like your backup starter. Last year, this guy was part, was a valued and trusted part of this rotation. So if we have to lean on that, we have to lean on that. Um, the other thing the main thing that I'm really encouraged about going into this season, and this is the thing I really want to talk about in this video because this is such a breath of fresh air, it feels like we, for the first time in a while, have a lineup that doesn't have any of those glaring weak spots where, there, you know, previous lineups, even last year, you would just have those one, two, sometimes even three spots in the lineup that were hitting like sub 80 ops plus. And every time they came up in a big situation, it just made you sick. Like it's the eighth inning, you're down by two runs, runners on second and third, two outs, and you're sending some guy who you know is not going to get it done up, like Luis Torrens, because there's nobody else. You don't have a pinch hitter. You don't have anybody better you can put out there. And it just, it's sickening. You're wasting so many opportunities because eventually the lineup loops back around to that guy who you just don't think is ever going to get it done. And it makes you want to turn the channel sometimes because it's so annoying. This lineup, for the first time the first time in a while I can even try to say this, I think is going to have players up and down that lineup 
who are hitting at least 90 ops plus. And I know 90 is not great or anything, but we're not going to have that guy who comes up to the plate and just makes us all annoyed already. Like they haven't even taken a cut yet and we're annoyed because it's a clutch situation and we just know it's not going to end well. Like you look at the guys we're going to have coming up to the plate this year, you know, Cal who broke out last year in a big way and could get better. Uh, Ty France, I know he wasn't playing well at the end of the season last year. He probably got hurt. Should be good again this year. Always been a good hitter when he's healthy. Um, replacing uh, Abraham Toro and Frazier with Colton Wong. I don't think Wong's going to be a great hitter. He might not even be a good hitter, but I think he'll be manageable, and I think he'll be better than what we had last year. Uh, Crawford is good for, you know, a 100 to maybe 97-ish ops plus most of the time. I was worried about Suarez, but he was really good in the WBC, so it seems like that's going to be okay. And we have a chance to actually have a full hit outfield of hitters. Rodriguez, Julio needs no introduction. Teoscar was really good last year for the uh, Blue Jays, so I think he'll be at least at a, an above average to good hitter. And A.J. Pollock, in the right matchups, absolutely rakes. So we should at least have that, but the potential that Jared Kelnick showed in spring, the way he absolutely destroyed the baseball in the spring, is maybe the most encouraging thing about this team right now in terms of their upside. That is something that most people had given up on, and now we might have it again. And if Kelnick can hit at a plus level, like if he has an ops plus of over 100 this year, and he stays healthy, and he's good in the field, which he was good in the field even last year, now you're talking... Now you've got something. Now you've got a little bit of depth in that outfield. Because remember, we're going to get Dylan Moore back at some point, and that's going to help beef up the depth everywhere because he plays every position. And you, you've got a little bit of insurance in case of an injury. You've got insurance to rest some players if need be. And you're not going to have that number eight or number nine hitter who comes up just to strike out and sit down again. Maybe that guy ends up being Colton Wong, but I don't think so. I'm not convinced he'll be average, but I think he'll be maybe a little below average. And you're going to have players like that when you don't have a monster payroll. It's going to happen. So I'm not worried about that so much. So that, to me, is the main reason why I'm excited about this team. No more at-bats given to guys like last year it was Toro. Last year it was Toro, it was Frazier, just these guys who just just never, ever get it done. And when they come up in those big situations, it's like, oh boy. Really, we spent hundred. We spent hundreds of millions of dollars putting this team together. We've got a big at bat and a big game, and this is the guy who's at the plate. Should be able to limit that. Now, if people get hurt, okay. And I'll say this: like I said, we go hypothetically, hopefully, four deep in the outfield with good bats. And by the way, Dylan Moore had an ops plus of one hundred and twenty-two last year. That guy actually has a pretty good bat. People hate on Dylan Moore's bat. It's not bad. And he gives you some infield depth as well. So when you remember that Haggerty, look, I'm not going to act like Haggerty's going to play as well as he did last year. He's not. But he can be okay. He can be a good utility player. And you put that all together, you've even got some depth. You've got some potential to pinch hit in at the end of close games. I don't know if Tommy Lestella is going to do anything at, at hit in his uh, infield utility role. I'm not sure how great I feel about him being one of your key utility players. But that might be the only guy in the daily rotation who is a bit of a, you know, you, you, you kind of already foregone the hope of him being good. Um, it's also nice having some depth at catcher with Tom Murphy being back. And Tom Murphy was actually playing really well last year before he got hurt. And I don't expect him to be that good this year, but he'll be capable. I think he could be a little bit better than Torrens was last year at the least, both as a catcher and as a hitter. So that's good. And hey, Cooper Hummel, one of the most exciting stories of our spring training. So a lot of stuff to be encouraged about there. I think the main concern with this team right now, and I say this every year and every year they figure it out. So maybe I shouldn't say it, but the bullpen. Right now, you look at our bullpen. Look, look on the screen right now, guys. Look at the screen. You notice something? We don't have any left-handers right now in the bullpen in all likelihood. We'll probably end up scraping together one, but it's not going to be a very good one in all likelihood. So how are we going to play matchups? And playing matchups, that's going to become even more crucial with no shift. 
going to be harder to play defense, going to be harder to prevent hits and runs. You need to be getting every edge you can. And we have built a bullpen completely out of right-handed pitchers. And on top of that, what are we going to get out of these guys? Munoz did not look that good in the spring. Is he going to take some time to get up to his form from last year? We did overuse him last year. Maybe we're still paying the price for that. I don't know. But you look at this Mariners bullpen, and it's suspect. And Suwald, I don't know what Suwald is right now. We clearly lost faith in him by the end of the year. Castillo, always going to be a roller coaster ride with him. Festa, kind of a guy who you just throw out there when the game's over anyway. Uh, Penn Murphy, I liked in parts last year, but he had some really bad outings. I don't think Flexen's game is great for the bullpen. Trevor Gott, who knows? Matt Brash, ton of fun, but it is right now not a bullpen I have a ton of trust in. I, I, if you were getting peak Munoz and peak Sewold and whatever peak Diego Castillo is at this point, okay, I could live with that. I could live with even the rest of the guys not being fully reliable, but are we getting that? I guess we'll know when we see it, but right now I'm looking at this bullpen and it doesn't make me feel great. I'm hoping some of these guys really improved in the offseason. I'm hoping we have uh, good trust in them. I hope we have correct trust in some of them. Like, to me last year it felt like we didn't trust Penn Murphy very much. And there were some outings where he proved us correct in not trusting him. So maybe this year we will trust him. I don't know. But this bullpen... Ah, uh, man, it feels like it's going to be a problem this year, but I said the same thing last year. They figured it out, and generally they figure out the bullpen stuff, so it's not a bad problem to have because usually they figure that out. All right, so there's a lot to like about this team. The main problem for me is the bullpen, and hey, I'll give them a chance. Uh, hope Dylan Moore gets back in the next couple weeks here. That's all I can say. All right, that's how I feel about this season right now. Go Mariners. Um... I'm feeling good. I feel like we're going to make the playoffs, but I don't know beyond that, man. I don't know beyond that. Every team in the division except for the Athletics got much better. I think we got somewhat better. Is that going to be enough? Who knows? But uh, see, guys, I'll probably stream the opening game in a couple hours on my laptop. Hope to see you guys there. But um, this is potential to be a really transformative season.